Amenhotep Nebaat Ra, by Maat, in Maat, for Maat. Reflecting on the history of the development of natural science, we may be distracted by the technological power of our scientific manipulation of the forces of nature. One of the things that it's very important to make clear is that power and knowledge are not the same thing. We often hear the quote, knowledge is power, not recognizing that if that were true, then measuring the power that humanity has essentially to destroy itself, one would have to conclude that humanity has reached the summit of knowledge. Clearly, knowledge can lead to power. Knowledge can contribute to power. But the mere appearance of power in itself is no sign of the presence of the ability to understand, to manage, and to foresee the long-term consequences of the uses of knowledge. This would indicate that there are different forms of power. And just as there are different forms of power, there are also different levels of knowledge. The recognition of the distinct separation and yet, at the same time, indivisibility of knowledge and power is the way in which knowledge can be used in a balanced way for the empowerment and successful survival of humanity. How does this then relate to the history of natural science? In the pursuit of a comprehensive understanding of the universe, a fundamental deviation has occurred. Science, and we can even identify a specific individual, Galileo, um, and then we have after him a whole series of other thinkers that we refer to as the scientific revolution. This would assume that prior to the 16th century, there was really no science. And clearly, we understand that there was a great deal of organized knowledge, methodology, um, traditions of principles of methods and techniques that were handed down, codified, and proven for thousands of years. So in what sense could we describe a revolution in knowledge when in fact science at that time was able to advance the manipulation of power by essentially ignoring the teleological and the qualitative functions of nature. The question as to whether nature has in fact an underlying geometry which transcends the momentary dynamics and interaction of individual particles um, or systems has never been fully or adequately investigated. Yet, preemptively, Galileo, René Descartes, Isaac Newton argued that since we at this time do not have the tools to investigate the form in which nature as a totality begins to appear as a lawful process, let us instead focus on that which we can measure and that which can be controlled through human technology. Now, essentially then, the scientific revolution should actually be called a scientific disaster because what we have done is to compromise the pursuit of a totalizing understanding of nature in, as a, a system that is integral and integrated with one in which we are essentially seeking the most efficient means for exploiting not only the natural environment, but the biological environment, um, the electromagnetic field, any area that is beginning to become classified as an empirical 
cause and effect process is immediately weaponized, immediately brought into the market domain. This is extremely dangerous because none of the systemic consequences of manipulating the infrastructure of natural systems has ever been essentially considered. So what we have happening is that the reciprocal effect of treating a system as linear when in fact it is holistic we refer to as side effects or or toxic um, repercussions as if these factors are outside of the chain of cause and effect when in fact the medical chemical and nuclear manipulation is in itself causing a direct and deleterious consequence on the total system. What is needed is a return to a unified, integrated, um, teleological approach which would allow us to comprehend nature not by looking at the surfaces of processes in a one-dimensional manner. In other words, we are beginning to essentially limit ourselves to the five senses as a medium for the complete comprehension of the universe. And the extension of those senses through laboratory observation and digitally enhanced imaging does not mean that we have crossed the horizon beyond the epistemological limits of the five senses. You do not increase the depth of perception by increasing the size of your data collection. Depth is only achieved through an epistemological extension of knowledge, not through mere technology. What is being recommended then is to properly incorporate those modes of knowledge, of perception, which have been essentially excluded in a preemptive um, and a very biased manner by the scientific establishment in order to achieve a science that is truly holistic, a science that incorporates all the phenomenological aspects of human awareness and treats our perceptions as inputs, not as final values, but begins to look at human awareness as an expanding and as an expandable domain in which we can begin to once again reclaim the ladder of knowledge. Humanity can move through the five senses through an epistemological awakening into the depths of the substantial and hidden aspects of, un of the universe around us, then our scientific power will come into harmony with the understanding of how that power should be used. We must reclaim, once again, a sacred science. First introduction to noetic science, Patton Duncan, professor of mathematics, quantum physicist, Seshat Sabah Ma'at Hotep. <laughs>